Hey everyone, a lot of people have asked me, what is the best pet snake? And to be honest, there isn't really a good answer for that because I don't think there is a best pet snake. It all depends on what you're comfortable with, your experience level and your matter of commitment, and honestly, just what you like. But to be completely honest, there is a group of snakes that I think do make a pretty good contender for that answer. And that is king snakes. So to start this, because we have a number of them, is Charlemagne, our California king snake, who gets his name from the C on his head, right there. So the reason why king snakes might make, actually there's a lot of reasons why king snakes could be the best pet snake. And there's really only one drawback, and I'm hoping in this video it's not going to happen, uh, because I just don't like to show it. And that is king snakes have an incredibly high prey response and response and drive and so they have a tendency including charlemagne here has just been like mm, this is warm let's just take a bite but if you can move past that uh you know we're once again depending on your experience level what you're comfortable with king snakes make an amazing group of animals that quite possibly fill the need and role of everyone who likes snakes so one drawback out of the way let's get to why they're so amazing so, king snakes right here. So these guys are North American colubrids. They are found from up into Canada all the way down to, and all the way down into Mexico and Central America. These are incredibly variable. There is a large number of species. They are all in the genus Lampropeltis, uh, which also has milk snakes in them. But we're really only talking about king snakes. Although to be honest. A lot of them are just as variable and have the same attributes as most of the king snakes, but we're only going to talk about king snakes because we already have quite a few of them. So, for instance, already number two, Mexican black king snake O'Malley, who is absolutely digging his new enclosure and is digging like crazy, although he is in shed a little bit. So, O'Malley here is a really cool guy. These guys have become super, super popular because obviously they are a jet black snake. They don't get as large as indigos because those are also very popular. But who doesn't love just like a solid black snake? So keeping in mind, so these guys, as you can saw, Charlemagne was fully grown. He's like at least six or seven years old. Not exactly how sure, but he's around that age. And he's fully grown. So about three and a half, four feet long. With the exception of a few very large individuals and species, such as like Florida king snakes and uh, Brooks king snakes, most of them only really achieve about that three and a half, four, maybe five feet long length. And California king snakes are actually one of the larger species of that. But O'Malley here, he's a little stunted because he escaped for a while and he didn't get the feeding that he really needed for a couple months when he was little. But he is catching up fast, like he has exploded in size since uh, we've gotten him back. He's up, been upgraded his enclosures twice, and we'll even have another enclosure upgrade soon that I'm gonna put out after the holiday season. But who these guys are so incredibly variable because of a number of different reasons. Number one is these guys genetically have just a crazy number of genetics when it comes to recessive and dominant traits. So anybody who knows what I'm talking about or some things going on in their heads thinking about ball pythons, these guys have arguably as many, well, maybe not as many because we've bred the crap out of ball pythons, sorry for the French there, um, but these guys have a, an alarming number of individual uh, patterns and morphs depending on the species. Even Mexican black king snakes here have a T-positive pure strain of that. Uh, in California king snakes with Charlemagne before, there are so many. There's two or three different types of albino, hypo, there's stripes, there's blotching, there's uh, banding. It's crazy how many different colors and varieties you can be. And so if you are a person who likes ball pythons, but maybe wants a little bit more of an interactive snake, but still gets really into the genetics, kind of like me, king snakes, specifically like California king snakes and other ones, uh, like even the Florida king snakes and brooks, have a wide variety of different morphs that you can super get into. So, speaking of morphs and colors and stuff like that, here is a... You okay, buddy? Whoop. I just woke him up from a nap, probably, but he seemed to be in a fairly good mood when he went up and out. Um, here is the male Thayeri, Thayer's Variable Sierra Leone King Snake. All of those are just different names for him. There we go, and we're back. And 
So the variable king snake, all those different names are essentially just pointing out what I said about them being super variable. These guys don't actually come in different like genetic morphs. They have different phases, which is something that it does occur naturally without the, you know, added benefit of human, you know, uh, selective breeding that we get all the different crazy like albino, hypo, banana, blah, 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 different morphs. And these are things that just occur naturally in their own range. These guys come in this tricolor milk snake phase. They come in kind of like a buckskin with orange blotch. They can be pure black like the uh, very like the Mexican black king snakes. And these guys are actually a little bit closer related to those than say like the California king snake. But these guys are so, so incredibly variable. So as you can see, he is moving around like crazy, but he's not really quick to strike like you would see like on some like, uh, like some different types of pythons and things like that, but he is moving around a little bit. So that's something that, like I said before, can be really cool if you're into just something that's a little bit more interactive, that moves a little bit more, but comes, like I said, just in this one species has so many different color variants and things like that. In addition to all the different colors and morphs, if you eventually get into breeding or collecting like a lot of reptile people do, is that you get into something that's a little bit different than just breeding for a specific morph or color, and that is locality. So as the world continues to kind of, human world continues to grow and expand and, eventually, and essentially encroach in uh, wild animal habitat, you end up losing a lot of locality species snakes that are actually a little bit different from each other. Uh, some of the big, big examples are like the different pine snakes, uh, like a lot of locality northern and southern pine snakes um, that all vary considerably over their historic geographic range. But as, you know, human develop continues, then you lose a lot of that. So locality-based breeding and collecting has become very in vogue as of late. Sorry, buddy. Um, he's actually been spending a lot of time underground. That's maybe why he's so twitchy. It's pretty bright in here. But I'll probably put him back because he is not getting happy about this right now. But, um, you know, as the world continues to grow and expand, locality breeding is something that's really, really cool that a lot of people are really, really getting into. So if you are a morph breeder, if you are a locality breeder, if you just like specific individual animals, there's so many species of king snakes that can give you exactly what you want. And we're going to finish with our baby ghost brooks king snake. Uh, we do have a couple other ones, like we have the gray band and a couple other, uh, we have another variable king snake and other things like that, as well as a number of milk snakes. But this little girl who uh, we got after we lost our very old brooks king snake, Brooksy, that you saw in another video, uh, and we, that, you know, we showed this girl off in a previous video for a couple months ago, and you can already see how much she has grown. But so I said ghost, so that means a hypo anery mix. So there you go. There's a two gene animal that exists in this one species of king snake. And so to finish that up with is a little bit with a bit of like the husbandry part of this. Uh, forgive me, there's a big loud truck about to go by in the background. But these guys have very easy care when it comes to a lot of things. They don't need a whole lot of specialty things like they did like a like a, uh, a Brazilian rainbow bow who needs very high humidity, not like a bearded dragon or a uh, Aki monitor that needs incredibly high temps. These guys, because they are living here in North America, we can more accurately kind of, you know, uh, re represent or recreate their, there we go, recreate, that's the word I was looking for, recreate their natural environments to better suit them. Now, they also don't get very large, although this little girl will eventually get some substantial size um, this is one of the few species of king snakes that regularly achieves over five feet in length. Um, the females, they don't get quite as large as the males when it comes to these specific species, um, but they still can get pretty big, uh, all things considered, like a six foot Brooks or Florida king snake, which Brooks are just a different subspecies of the Florida king snake. Um, at least I think so right now with current taxonomy, but they have very easy care. They don't need, at, they, I like to give them a lot of space more than I would some of the other type of uh, snakes like ball pythons and stuff. I like to give them a lot of room because they're more active moving around, more interactive snakes, which is once again, why I'm getting super into colubrids because they're a more interactive snake. I kind of like sitting there watching them, interacting with them and giving them more things to interact with than a ball python who will, not to say won't, but doesn't necessarily do it when I'm around and awake for them to do it because ball pythons are nocturnal. But 
Sorry, getting a little rambly there for a second. King snakes are just an amazing group of animals. They are so they have so much variety and a lot of things to give. Their care is very easy. They don't need crazy high temps. They don't need crazy high humidity, you know, just room temp with the low basking spots. Some species like the California king snakes or the desert kings, they need a, maybe a little bit warmer of a high spot, maybe up into the, like the low to mid 90s. Um, but as long as you give them places to hide, plenty of room, they will dig as been shown with uh, O'Malley, our Mexican black king snake, who's just digging like crazy. Even the variable king snake, I gave him a little burrow in a in a new enclosure that I put him in that he spends a lot of time underground in. But they're just really cool snakes that if you basically are looking for like, oh, I want a black snake, they have it. I want a white snake, they have it. I want a purple snake, they have that too. It's absolutely crazy. They, and you know, once again, we talked about the one little drawback, but other than that, these guys are incredibly amazing, beautiful animals. You just saw in this little video, we just went through four or five different animals really quick. And they all are doing just fine as soon as they realize, all right, I'm not food. But that's kind of like a lot of different snakes and reptiles in general, too. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video or at least seeing some different cool snakes. What do you guys do you think? Do you think that king snakes are really kind of the best pet out there? Do you have a preference when it comes to other things? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. You know, what do you think is the best one? What's your favorite type of snake? Like I said before, I'm a big boa guy to begin with, and I'm always going to love them. But these king snakes kind of have a lot to offer for anybody who's interested in snakes in general. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you can. Let me know down in the comments. Hit me up, jayzysreptiles at gmail.com if you want to know anything. If you have any ideas for future videos, if you're interested in merch, we just put some merch out and we have more products coming out soon of different patterns, different colors. We're getting a lot more sizes in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Catch you next time. Hope you're having a great day and we'll see you later.